Hi again everyone, I'm Chris Tisdale and I'm a mathematician at UNSW in Sydney. And in this presentation I'm going to share some recent research with you. Now, the uh, ideas in this presentation build on some previous results of mine. And even though, technically speaking, um, this is new research, I've put it together so that it will be understandable by a good undergraduate student. For example, say a second or third year undergraduate student in mathematics. The title of this presentation is Improved Existence Results for Boundary Value Problems via a Modified Function Approach. So there's two parts to this uh, presentation. The first is an introduction where I motivate uh, and um, summarise the ideas and the second part is the main results. Okay, so I'm going to show you a technique called a modified function approach, which is decades old, but it's um, oh, I'm warming to the idea more and more now, and I'm, I'm sort of, especially in the last few months, I've been really, really interested in this modified function approach. And I'm going to apply this approach to generate existence results for solutions to certain boundary value problems. In particular, those boundary value problems are going to be first order, two point, and um, the ideas answer a question on when does a, a boundary value problem have at least one solution. And like I said before, the ideas build on some of my own research uh, from 2006. Speaking of which, in 2006 I published a paper, I'll show you the details of this at the end, um, where I, I stated and proved the following result. Suppose I have a boundary value problem. Now, the little arrow at the top of the letters means that it's a vector. So this is a first order, possibly non-linear system of um, differential equations. And here we have some extra information known as some boundary conditions that are um, essentially, uh, you couple them together and you get what's known as a boundary value problem. Now here, big A and big B are n by n matrices. This C uh, bar is just a, a constant vector. A and B are real numbers, A less than B. Now the theorem in this paper is as follows. Suppose this vector valued um, function big F is defined on this sort of whole set here and that it's continuous. In addition, assume that the determinant of this sum of matrices is non-zero. If there are non-negative constants, little v and little w, such that big F satisfies an inequality like this on this whole set, and this inequality is satisfied, then this boundary value problem has at least one solution that satisfies this sort of a priori bound. Now this looks quite abstract on a first viewing, so let me um, digest, uh, uh, break this down a bit for you. Okay, essentially this means that these inverses will I exist. Now, by these two sort of um, pairs of, uh, th th this pair of, of, of vertical lines, I mean the um, magnitude or the norm of this f. By these angled brackets, I mean the scalar uh, product or the dot product, inner product, whatever you like, on, on Rn. Um, by this, when I've got these capital or these matrices in here, and I'm, I'm taking the, the norm of that, I just mean any norm that's compatible with the norm for um, vectors in Rn. Okay, now if f's continuous, this holds, and f satisfies, big F satisfies this sort of inequality on this set with this holding for our two matrices, then this boundary, value, this boundary value problem has at least one solution that satisfies this a priori bound. Okay, now I proved that in this paper using so-called fixed point methods. Now, um, you, you could reprove this using all sorts of um, approaches, um, uh, shouted um, fixed point theorem, topological transversality, Schaaf's fixed point theorem, but in that paper I um, actually used Luray Schauder degree. Now um, we're going to actually use this and apply it to another uh, boundary value problem. Now 
suppose that I define a, a subset of this whole set omega sub r by this um, definition here. The question, the main question that we're going to look at in this presentation is the following. Suppose I have another boundary value problem just with little f bar instead of big f bar here on the right hand side. What if that little f bar only satisfies the conditions of theorem 1 on this smaller set where r is some number that's greater than or equal to this, this k. Okay, so whenever we see r in this presentation, it's always assumed to be greater than or equal to this, this uh, number k. So how do we answer this question? Well, we use what's known as a modified function approach, and we're going to rely on theorem 1. Okay, so to do so, let's have a look at the following result. Now, it, it won't be clear from a first viewing why this result is important, but when I uh, present theorem 3, that's when the real um, value of this theorem will be apparent. Okay, so suppose I've got a little f that's defined on this subset of um, a uh, comma b cross rn. Suppose it's continuous there and this determinant condition satisfied. If little f satisfies an inequality like this on this smaller set, then we can construct a continuous function, big F, that's defined on this whole set that satisfies this, uh, a similar inequality on this whole set. Okay? So in other words, what we're going to do is sort of extend or modify uh, this F and, and extend its domain to the whole of this set such that that extension is continuous and that that extension satisfies this kind of inequality for the same uh, constants v and um, w. So how do we do it? Well, let me show you. We'll discuss the proof. I'm going to define my big F via the following. Well, big F and little f are identically equal on omega sub r. And outside of omega sub r, I'm going to define my big F to be the following. Again, it depends on the little f. Okay, so what we want to do is, the, 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 it's pretty easy to show that big F is continuous on the whole set, just from this um, definition, because little f is continuous here, and this is sort of like a continuous extension. Okay, now what we want to do is show that big F satisfies this on this whole set, okay, for, for this big F. <coughs> Now, in particular, because uh, big F and little f are identical on this set, they're identical also on, the, well, they're equal on the boundary. Okay, in other words, where, where this occurs, we'll use that in proving the uh, inequality five on this set. Okay, so let's restrict our attention to this part of the set and consider this. Well, from our definition of big F, this is the set I'm working in, so that's our definition there. I can replace big F with this, and then all, all I can do is move this out the front to get the following, and now you'll, you'll see that this entry has length equal to R, and this, the same, of course, entry has length equal to R. So in other words, this entry kind of lies on the boundary of omega sub r, and so does this. Now, on that boundary, we know that uh, little f satisfies an inequality like this. So I can then go from here, introduce this inequality, and I'll get this here. So this is by inequality 4. Okay, well, this is almost our big F, but not quite. I can actually insert this in, and this is, uh, this is less than or equal to 1, so I can form a new inequality. And now, this is exactly the uh, magnitude of, of big F. So I get this is greater than or equal to this on this set. Okay, so combining this case on this set and the previous case in omega sub r, I get the um, inequality holding on the whole set for big F. Okay, so um,
let's look at the um, main existence result now. So suppose I've got a boundary value problem where f is defined on this set and the r is greater than or equal to k where the k was the constant from theorem 1. Suppose it's continuous, this determinant condition is satisfied and there exist constants non-negative constants v and w such that little f satisfies an inequality like this on this smaller set. Now if this um, condition is also satisfied then this boundary value problem has at least one solution. So let's tr uh, how are we going to prove it? Well we use theorem 1 and theorem 2 to, to prove it. The proof is very short but it, it's very um, pretty I think. Okay. Well, let's consider the modified version or extended boundary value problem of this where we replace little f with big F and big F is defined as in the proof of theorem 2. Okay, now remember throughout we're assuming the r here in the, in the omega sub r is always greater than or equal to k. Okay, well we know that the big F is continuous and it satisfies an inequality uh, where is it? an inequality like this on the whole set. Now bringing in these conditions as well we actually see that by theorem 1 the modified boundary value problem has at least one solution. Now, in particular, from theorem 1, solution to the modified boundary value problem must also satisfy a bound, this bound here. And because k's sorry, I've got that round the wrong way. Now because k is less than or equal to r, because k is less than or equal to r, this means that the solutions to, to the modified boundary value problem must lie in this set here. So what is big F in this set? Well it's equal to little f. So a solution to the modified problem exists, the solutions lie where big F is essentially uh, the same as little f, therefore those functions must also satisfy this boundary value problem. So therefore we've um, proved that this problem has at least one solution. Now here's a the details of the uh, paper that I wrote in 2006, that's freely downloadable from this web page. So if you want more uh, information, say for example on the proof of Theorem 1, fixed point methods, you can download it and look it up there.